In this episode of the Project Management Podcast, I'll introduce you to my 10th step best practice approach on how to earn your 60 PDUs for PMP renewal easily and with purpose. Hello and welcome back to the Project Management Podcast at pm-podcast.com. This is episode 355 and I'm Cornelius Fichtner. Thank you very much for once again joining me. If you are PMI certified, then you know that your certification is only good for three years. During those three years, you have to earn up to 60 PDUs. And then at the end of the cycle, you have to renew your certification, after which it is good again for another three years. And you'll have to earn your next PDUs. And this cycle continues for as long as you want to keep your certification status. Now, there are many ways in which you can earn those PDUs. You can go to a training, you can read a book, uh, you can give a presentation. So you could simply just go ahead and sign up for the first training that comes your way or pick up any book and go for it but maybe not such a good idea. How about a process? How about a plan? How about an approach instead? And this is what this episode is all about. I'm going to give you a 10 step process, a 10 step approach that will allow you to earn your PDUs with purpose and make your life easier. It is a recording of a live streaming event that I did a few days ago. It was quite a lively event with lots of questions coming in. So I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it and learn a lot about PDUs. Here we go. Hello everyone and welcome to our live event. Today everything is going to be around PDUs, about professional development units. Let me bring that up for you here. What are we going to be talking about? We are going to be talking about the 10 steps to earning PDUs and renewing your project management professional certification. That's what we will be talking about. So, and just to make it absolutely clear from the very start, PDUs are only needed after you pass your PMI exam. So if you are currently studying for any of the PMI's exams, then you don't need to worry about PDUs yet. But don't just hit the end button and go away because this is going to be vital for you once you have passed your exam. All right, my name is Cornelius Fichtner and uh, I will be taking you through these 10 steps here today. I have been a PMP trainer since about 2005. Um, so I've uh, developed the PM prep cost and also the PM exam simulator. But I want to welcome especially my listeners of the Project Management Podcast today because the Project Management Podcast and also the PDU Podcast here on the right hand side, this is where where I offer a, I, I'm, I'm, I want to say a ton of PDUs because the uh, PDUs that we offer over there, uh, my best guess is that with the Project Management Podcast, we, I've helped about a million PDUs to be submitted over the past few years. So I want to make sure that you know uh, how to approach using your PDUs. So what are we going to be talking about today? I have two learning objectives for you. First of all, uh, you will be able to list the recommended steps in renewing your certification. Okay, that's the main goal of this. But in just a few minutes, you will be able to also describe the key to success. And uh, these two together at the end, you'll see they will make you understand how to really successfully and strategically approach earning your PDUs and renewing your certification every three years. Here is our agenda. Let me make that full screen for you here. Uh, there we go. All right. So 
First of all, we are going to be uh, doing a quick introduction. Uh, don't worry, just a minute in duration here. Uh, then we go straight in that first takeaway there. What is the key to success? And uh, that is followed by the main part of the webinar, where we will spend about two to three minutes on each of these 10 steps. And after that, We'll go back to the key to success that we learned about uh, uh, earlier, and I'll show you what you need to do to actually achieve that key to success. And of course, we will close the webinars with a few links to remember. Actually, it's going to be four. I just added a, a slide yesterday. So it's going to be four links there. Oh, wait, I know. just noticed there's another error on this slide here because even though the, the webinar is called 10 steps, it's actually 11. I have an 11th step for you right there. All right, so let's jump into this. Oh, and by the way, by the way, if you have any questions, if you are watching this live on YouTube or on Facebook, then please don't hesitate to ask any questions about professional development units, about PDUs, as we go along. And I'll bring you up and I will, uh, I will answer the questions live here on air. All right, back to the presentation here. So, um, to get us started, let me tell you that the reason why I created this webinar is because I regularly receive emails from PMPs about how they could quickly earn their 60 PDUs. It's quite frustrating for them when they then realize that, oh my, um, my renewal is up in, I don't know, three, four weeks, and now I have to spend every free minute that I have in earning those PDUs. And so I decided that instead of frustration, you know, you need a roadmap. So I developed the 10 steps that we are going to be looking at in just a moment. And here they are as an overview. And as you can see from just glancing at these, you know, they are all action items that you can check off one by one on your road to recertification. Okay, and uh, as you are seeing these, you may probably be saying, oh God, I gotta start taking notes, right? Uh, don't worry about taking notes during the webinar here today because I have everything for you uh, in an article and the link to the article will be at the the end here. All right, a couple of people have already uh, left comments. Uh, just uh, welcome here to Kazim, and also Hosni is here as well. Uh, they're both joining us here on Facebook. Nice to have you both uh, on the live program here today. Okay, so before we review those 10 steps, however, as promised, here is the number one insight that I would like you to take away from this webinar. I call this the key to renewal success, and it is this here. Earn your PDUs regularly. So instead of waiting for two years or even three and a half years to earning your 60 PDUs as a PMP, uh, you know, just in the last few weeks before you need to uh, renew, do a little bit every month, okay? So please, if this, there's really just one thing that you take away from this webinar, it's this here. Earn, claim, and repeat this next month, okay? You want to earn your PDUs, you want to then go to the PMI website to claim your PDUs, and you want to repeat that the next month as well. And frankly, if this is the only thing that you are taking away from this webinar, then I think that I have already succeeded because you're now doing something regularly to earn your PDUs and you're not going, oh my God, I have three weeks left. I need 60 PDUs. How do I quickly do that? Okay. Ayodala has also joined us. Uh, thanks for the webinar. You are welcome. I hope you find it informative. All right. Now let's get started with step one. 
Step one is download the CCR Handbook. PMI has published the CCR Handbook, the Continuing Certification Requirements Handbook. You can download it from their website. And don't forget, you'll get a link to this. Everything is, is, is ready for you there. The handbook explains everything that you'll need to know about the process of renewing your certification. And this should be only taking you about 20 minutes uh, to read it, right? And uh, it will answer most of your questions questions about PDUs. Like uh, it's 20 pages long, it contains all the renewal policies and all for all the certifications and it is however a little bit hidden on the PMI website. Okay, um, PMI has a tendency to change their website quite regularly and they change all the links and all that. So if you go to this link here pm-podcast.com slash ccrhb as in ccr handbook right ccrhb that will take you to that handbook straight away and if pmi changes it again in half a year or a year from now i will simply update my redirect link here and you will always find the latest ccr handbook okay i got a comment here from kazim i have 35 pdus pmp okay let me repeat what i said at the very beginning because if you mentioned 35 that means you are preparing for the pmp exam okay now this is a very important distinction Kazim here we are not talking about contact hours you need 35 contact hours before you take the PMP exam today we are talking about earning 60 PDUs after you have passed your PMP exam so what you have are 35 contact hours before the PMP exam as you are preparing for the exam all right, let me continue here because we are already at step two. In order for you to renew your certification, you need to understand the PMI talent triangle. And guess what? It has three sides, just like any triangle. We have technical project management here. We have leadership here and we have strategic and business management here and when you earn your PDUs you must earn PDUs in each of these three categories. So what exactly are they? Technical project management. This is knowledge, skills and behaviors that are related to specific domains of project program and portfolio management. For example, uh, risk management, scheduling, applying project management processes. Those are the technical skills. Actually managing the project, that's a technical skill. Then we have leadership. This is knowledge, skills and behaviors that are specific to leadership oriented activities like setting a vision, acting ethically, decision making. Those are all the type of skills that I would attribute to the leadership domain. And then lastly, the strategic and business management. This is knowledge of and experience in industry or organization. Specifically, that knowledge and expertise that will help you improve the performance performance and delivery of business outcomes like business acumen, developing a deeper understanding of your industry and uh, those kind of things that really help you get better at business as a whole. Okay, so you need to understand what these three sides of the talent triangle are. All right, step three, you need to review the minimum and maximum PDU requirements. Now you can find this, <coughs> excuse me, you can find this in the CCR handbook on page four and five. And I've gone ahead and I've summarized really the high level here for you in these few bullets. Okay. So first of all, you need to earn 35 PDUs as a minimum through education. Okay. You must earn eight in the technical, eight in the leadership and eight in the strategic business category that we just talked about. Okay. Six is not enough. You must earn eight. Ten is over eight. So, you know, it's a minimum. So you just have to earn at least that many. You can also tell that eight and eight and eight is 24. So you have to get an additional 11 in education from somewhere. 
Okay, and then the maximum down there, uh, that's 25 maximum through giving back. Giving back is what I do right now. You know, I give a presentation about project management and I can actually claim a PDU for the work that I'm doing here today to giving back to you, the community at large. And also I'm the host of the project management podcast that qualifies as well, giving presentations and things like that. Okay. Step four, you want to know which PDUs to know, uh, to earn first, okay? By now you know the basics and you understand what the requirements are because you've read the handbook, you understand all those minimums, right? You know what the talent triangle is. Now you also need to understand which PDUs you need to earn first, okay? And there are two rules for this. Rule number one for all certifications, no matter if you're a PMP or an ACP or a CAPM or whatever it is that your certification is, you want to earn the PDUs from the leadership and strategic and business management side first. Okay, those two you want to cover first, those eight minimum leadership and eight minimum strategic and business. And then second, this only counts if you have multiple certifications. So for example, you are a PMP and you are an ACP or you are a PMP and you are a scheduling professional or a risk management professional. So first you do the leadership and strategic and business and then you switch over to your secondary certification and you say, okay, now I'm going to earn all my agile PDUs for my PMI ACP, okay? And here is why we have these two rules. First of all, rule number one, you know, why should you earn leadership and business and strategic management first? They're a little bit harder to find and get these days, right? And they also count towards all of your certifications. So if you earn eight leadership PDUs, they count for your PMP and for your ACP. And if you are also a PGMP, they count for that as well. So you, you, th those eight PDUs, they count for every single certification you have at the same time. And then rule number two, so you're also an ACP, for example, and now you earn your agile PDUs, they go back into your generalist certification. So your agile PDUs, they give you the, they cover everything you need under the PMI ACP, but then they also help you with the PMP because they qualify as technical learning for your PMP, as technical PDUs for your PMP. All right, promised you an example. Let's take a look at a few here. So, first of all, we have a lazy project manager who said, ah, I'm just going to earn the minimum, right? I know I have to do 8, 8, and 8 in strategic, and I can give back 25 PDUs by doing presentations. I give presentations constantly, okay? And that is, that is what I do. Yeah, well, unfortunately not. That's only 49 PDUs. You need 60 PDUs to recertify your certification. So, no, nah, that doesn't work. The second one says, well, okay, I am going to do the minimum, eight, eight, and eight, and then we'll just do 36 in the giving back. I, I do so many presentations, that adds up to 60. Uh, no, because remember, giving back, maximum 25. Yes, you have earned 60 PDUs, but PMI will only count a maximum of 25 there. So you still haven't reached what you need to do. All right, the third person here says, okay, I'm going to do 20 in technical, 20 in leadership, 20 in giving back, and oh yeah, I forgot about strategic and business, I'll just do four here. Doesn't work either. You need a minimum of eight in strategic as well, okay? Yes, you have 64 PDUs, but because you don't have eight in strategic, doesn't count. You need to, this person still needs to earn four more PDUs in strategic. Oh, finally, finally, we have somebody who understands the rules. Okay, this person earned 14 in technical, 12 in leadership, 9 in strategic, and 25 in giving back. That's a total of 60 PDUs. Perfect. This person can now renew their PMP certification. Next one. Okay, yes, this person says, you know what? 
I, it's really hard for me to find leadership and strategic. I'll just do the minimum. That's what they did. Eight and eight there in column two and three. And I fill up the rest with technical and giving back. Okay, that's perfectly okay, right? Nobody says you have to earn more than your eight in leadership and strategic. A minimum is there. Okay, moving on. This person says, you know what? I am, I'm camera shy. I don't want to give back. I, I don't do presentations. I don't write books or articles. Uh, but I'm going to do 20, 20, 20. And that is perfectly okay. So this person also has their 60 PDUs. Okay. And then uh, this person here says, right, I am going to do it differently. I will do eight in leadership, eight in strategic, and then the rest, I do 46 PDUs in technical. Okay, now take a good look at this one here. Notice how there on the last line, I made the 62 blue, okay? That's because 46, eight and eight, that's not just 60, that's 62. So this person has not only achieved their 60 PDUs, this person has gone over the 60 PDUs, okay? So there is a, another, uh, an, another uh, rule that we'll look at in a little bit. What happens if you have too many PDUs in one cycle? We'll get back to that. Okay, uh, I have a question here for Sharon. How do you register your PDUs? Um, this is done on the PMI's CCRS website, and uh, you have to have a free account with PMI. You log in, and you simply say, um, you know, what you've got. I watched a webinar, one PDU, I read a book, two PDUs, and PMI will take you step by step through this. I do have, on the Project Management Podcast, I do have a, uh, a video that uh, that I've got there that I can probably I can probably bring that up later on. All right, I'll do that. Okay. Um Ayodale, uh, has a question about uh okay, again, uh, if you are preparing for your PMP exam, then it's not about PDUs, it is about contact hours, right? So I'm going to not answer your question here. I'll answer it in the chat, but I won't answer it live. So uh, you are asking about contact hours to prepare for the PMP exam. I'm talking about PMP uh, PDUs that are after you pass your PMP exam. All right, back to the topic at hand here. Summary, okay. Get your leadership PDUs and your... Uh, oh, that's incorrect, another mistake. Your leadership and strategic PDUs first here, right? Uh, got to update the slide. And we want to then, as a second, complete the specialized PDUs first. Okay. All right. Step five. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Sharon, I completely forgot. That's the next step. How do you register your PDUs? And I'm thinking about how am I going to bring that video up and show you where to find this. All right. So... Sharon, here comes your answer. How do you register your PDU? Well, you log in to the CCRS website and review your account, and that's where you also would register it. Okay, so right now we want to log in to this account and just take a look at where we are at. Okay, this is uh, where I am at. This is about two weeks old. These are actual uh, actual numbers from my account. As you can see, I have 28.25 PDUs that I still need to earn. It's a good idea to go there and check how much do we, uh, how many PDUs, excuse me, do I actually still need? Because what you will see then is you will see something similar. Where's my cursor here? My cursor has disappeared. It does not want to be. Where is it? Is it anywhere? Yep, there it is. Okay, because what you'll notice is here. See this? I only have seven and a half leadership PDUs. Okay, so I have to make sure that I'm going to be earning another half a leadership PDU at some point in the next, how many days do I have? 973 days. So I have quite a bit 
uh, left. Oh, and Sharon, by the way, uh, I also remembered that one of the steps later on is I'm going to show you actually how and to log in and, and take care of that. So, But this is only taking a look at the overview here. So right now, I know what I still need, okay? And I need to know what I still need because of the next step. Without knowing what I need, I cannot be planning and scheduling the earning of my PDUs, okay? I now know exactly, I need to have half a, uh, half a PDU in leadership and then I can fill up the rest with whatever because my technical and strategic and business, they're, they're fine, I'm, I'm full up there, okay? So, how do you plan this? Here are some ideas to consider, okay? Consider your daily, weekly routine, right? Uh, and your commute, for example. Do, do you ride by bus? Do you go by train? Or do you drive by car? Can you use that time maybe to read a book in the bus and uh, make it a leadership book, right, to earn PDUs that way? Um, yeah, reading habits, same idea, right? Come out, combine that with your commute if you can. Uh, what are your surfing habits? Are you always on the internet? Do you love to read, uh, you know, current articles and, and, and learn? from the internet then well that's that's an idea on how you can earn your PDUs the monthly goal has to be about one and a half PDUs right uh, you have to renew it in 36 months and 36 times 1.5 is just slightly above 60 there okay so that's that's your goal one and a half PDUs per month that you want to earn step seven Okay, now with all that thinking and planning, right, uh, the work already done, uh, earning your PDUs almost seems like the easy part because you now understand all the rules and you know what you need to earn and how you need to earn. Let me, let me show you an example of what I recently did. Okay. This is literally from within the last four months. Okay. I had to renew my certified Scrum Master, my CSM. Okay. And I decided that I was going to be listening to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And uh, that gave me the necessary Scrum, Scrum units that I needed to renew my CSM. And then I turned around and said, Hey, PMI, I just renewed my CSM. Here are all the PDUs that I earned over there for my PMP certification. And note what I did. I, I don't have a PMI ACP, but I have a CSM. So I focused on that specialized certification and then turned around and submitted that to PMI as well because it counts okay there are also two new project management standards that came out this year uh, the ANSI draft project management standard seventh edition and also the ISO draft 21502 I read both of these draft project management standards and I claimed technical PDUs I think two hours three hours uh, for each of those because I really you know analyzed them quite well uh, getting ready for this presentation here today and actually delivering it uh, gives me PDUs and I really like to uh, read a series on the BBC website called The Boss. I think it's called The Boss. This is all about uh, people, successful business owners and how they you know, struggled and managed the business and, and got back on their feet. It takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to read one of those. So what I do is, you know, to, just to be ethically correct, I read about five or six of those, so definitely more than an hour, and then I submit one PDU for reading those articles. So you want to really, you know, make earning your PDUs work for you. Don't think of it as a chore, okay? This is not a chore for you. And, and this here works for me, right? This is the way that I approach this whole thing. To me, yes, you have to earn PDUs, but I'm not going to go, oh my God, I have to earn PDUs. This is so boring, right? No. Instead, I look at this as a learning and growing opportunity, okay? Uh, let's see, we have a question there from somebody. If I did not use my PMP training hours for contract hours prior to PMP certification, can I use it for PDUs now? Rista, I am sorry to tell you that the answer is unfortunately no, you cannot. 
you can only earn PDUs after you have passed your certification. Everything that you did before your certification does not count for your renewal after your certification. There is one difference. Let's say you are already PMP certified and you take a course for a PMI ACP or the other way around. You are PMI ACP certified and you take a course for the PMP. Then that course counts for the certification that you already have. Okay, so only in the situation where you are certified and you're preparing for another certification can you use those training hours as PDUs for your existing certification. But you cannot use unused contact hours, training hours from before your certification to, you know, sort of double dip afterwards. No. Okay. That was step seven. Step eight. Now you want to claim your PDUs immediately. Okay, we're coming back to Carol here. How do you register your PDUs? Well, once again, you will need to log in to the PMI CCRS website and uh, there you have to select what it is. In this particular case here, as you can see, I selected digital media webinar there at the top in the center. And um, this would be for claiming, I don't know, a podcast or a webinar, a TEDx presentation on some business topic that you see. And uh, then you would fill this in here. Uh, quite a bit of information that you need to fill in, but you know, uh, it, uh, it helps PMI to ascertain that you have actually taken uh, or earned your PDUs. M my tip really is, you know, once you're done with something, claim your PDU. Once you're done with something, claim your PDU. If you wait for six months, you will forget. You will not remember. Oh, wait a second. What was that about again? Was that one hour or was that just 45 minutes, right? But if you do it right away, then it's done. Plus, here's the good thing, right? This is a little bit of gamification, right? Because once you have taken a webinar, you go back to the CCRS, you see your numbers change, right? Oh, 28.25 PDUs missing. Now it's only 27.25. Yay, I'm getting closer to my goal, right? So you see yourself progressing there. Okay, cool. That was step eight. Step nine is document your PDUs for a potential audit. The CCR handbook that we downloaded in step one talks about the possibility of an audit, okay? And here's something to tell you. Until four weeks ago, I had never heard of anyone being audited for a PDU, okay? And about four, maybe six weeks ago, Three of my students got audited for their PDUs in the same week, okay, uh, the same two weeks. But still, right, never heard of something like this before. Nobody got ever audited by the P for the PDUs they submitted. And now suddenly, you know, PMI is actually starting to audit people for their PDUs, okay? So what do you need to do to prepare for such an audit? Well, first of all, be honest, right? Don't claim any PDUs that you cannot document. That's the thing that you didn't actually get. That's the, the first thing. All right, so um, PMI needs some way to ensure that you really did this. So they want you to be able to give me a registration letter, right? Uh, take a letter of attendance, maybe, a proof of employment, copies of your presentations, or any other supporting materials. For example, I will be taking a screenshot on Facebook today from this live event, and you know I can then clearly state, hey, look, I've delivered this, this was on here, it was this and this long, probably about 45 minutes by the time we are done here, right? And so I get 0.75 PDUs in the technical category for the, oh no, sorry, giving back. For me, it's giving back, okay? Um, yes, and um, there we are. Uh, we have another question from Sharon. How long are the PDUs valid for? Okay, so, um, they're really valid only during the three years. So if you earn a PDU now, you know, forget to claim it, 
then six years from now, you can't go back and say, oh, I'd like to claim a PDU from six years back. That doesn't work. That's why I say, once you have a PDU, claim your PDU so that your three-year renewal cycle, you know, can be completed there. Okay. So how do you, how do you track this? How do you audit, uh, prepare for an audit? Well, I have the project management podcast log file for you. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet, but it contains everything that PMI says that you have to keep at uh, the date of when you did it, what it was, what you learned and, uh, and all of that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've got a couple more questions. Uh, Dan, I saw your question. I'll be answering that in just a minute. Uh, we'll continue here. All right. Pay and renew. Okay. When you are finally done and you have your 60 PDUs, then it's time for you to go back to the CCR website. It's ccrs.pmi.org. And you can now claim those PDUs, right? Uh, two things you can do here. PMI is actually quite good. And they will send you email reminders about the renewal. So look for the renewal email and they'll tell you very soon, hey, you've reached your 60 PDUs, you can now renew, right? So just wait or, well, uh, go ahead and just do it, right? Um, you know exactly that you have reached your 60 PDUs and you, yeah, you're now ready to do it and why wait for PMI? You can recertify ahead of time. You can recertify after 13 months if you have your 60 PDUs, okay? All right, now back to Dan's question here. When, during, the three-year cycle, should I claim the work as a practitioner for PDUs? Um, in my recommendation here, well, let me first of all track, backtrack here. Um, what does that mean, the PDUs working as a practitioner? Remember the 25 maximum that you can claim for giving back? Working as a project manager gives you, whoa, eight? <laughs> Don't know it by heart. I think it's eight PDUs, okay? Yeah, just for doing your job, PMI gives you eight PDUs for free if you are a project management professional. So at some point during these three years, you can claim your eight PDUs. My recommendation would be do it at the end because, you know, how, let's say you're done with your PDUs after 12 months already and you want to claim your eight PDUs then. Well, you can't. You've only worked for one year out of your three years. You can't say, well, I'll be continuing to work as a project manager. Doesn't count. You, so at the, at, at the one year time point, you can only claim a third. At the two year point, you can claim two thirds. And close to the end, you can claim your eight PDUs there. So I would say close to the end, near the end of your three year cycle. That's when you should claim your eight PDUs. Okay, now then, okay. Remember I said, so this was step 10, so we're basically done, but I said that there was a mistake. Well, it's not a mistake, I planned for it. A bonus step, step 11, keep going, earn 20 more PDUs. Wait, I saw a question about this. I saw a question, ta-da, there we go. This is from GTMX14. Hello, Cornelius, during the third year, are there any limits to the PDUs that can be carried over to the next three-year certification cycle? And this is what bonus step 11 here is all about because if you continue to earn PDUs, you can, it's kind of like minutes from your phone plan that roll over or used to roll over at least, 20 PDUs will roll over. Okay, let's take a look at this. So, yes, up to 20 PDUs will roll over. And that's a really good way, you know, to get a head start, right? So let's say you're done after two years. It's like, yeah, I'm in the mood. I'm, you know, I'm more training coming and all that. Okay, you know, close it out and then earn 20 more PDUs and they will roll over. R remember earlier on we had the, the example there where somebody had earned 62 PDUs, okay? Yeah, those two PDUs will roll over, but 
only for PDUs earned in the third year of your renewal cycle. So, in other words, if you close out your renewal cycle in the first year, you earned all your 60 PDUs in the first year, and you say, I'm renewing, I'm, I'm now a PMP, and I'm going to just continue, I'm going to earn another 60. Well, no, not going to work. Your renewal period is three years, and you just ended it. That means for the next two years, purely theoretically, you don't have to earn a single PDU, and then it starts up again. But if during the second year you earn additional PDUs, doesn't count. So you're closing out on the first year, then second year, take time off. Don't earn any PDUs because they, you will lose them. You will you flat out lose them. PMI will not count them. And then in the third year, now, once again, you're like, okay, I'm in the third year of my renewal cycle. I can now start pre-earning PDUs. Is that a word? I can earn PDUs ahead of time for the third year. That's coming up pretty soon. And there, as I said, only, we go back one slide here, only 20 PDUs. So if you earn 60 PDUs in year one and 60 PDUs in year three, you have just lost 40 PDUs because only 20 of those 60 PDUs will roll over. Okay, getting back here to this. Okay, and you know, that's really it. Those were our 10 or rather 11 steps. Here's once again the overview. So the first six steps here, they help you understand how renewal works and how to plan your approach. Step seven, that's going to take you the longest because, well, yeah, you have to invest one hour for each PDU that you earn and then in step eight, want to claim, right? And of course, don't forget to document your PDUs. And when it comes to documentation, for, for example, remember I, I mentioned that I was listening to the um, uh, uh, Scrum Toolmaster, oh, Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, that's what it was called, right? And I claimed that as PDUs. What I did is I literally wrote up a little blurb for each episode that I listened to and said, okay, this is what I learned, this is what I did, here is how I can apply this. And so there I had clear documentation, you know, that shows I have done what I said I was doing. There were even some that I said, you know, I listened to this, I'm not gonna claim a single PDU for it because this was a useless episode, at least for me it was useless, right? I didn't learn anything from it, therefore I'm not going to claim a PDU for it, zero PDUs. Uh, I didn't claim zero, obviously, you know, I claimed, I listened for a week, five episodes, and then I claimed only four out of the five. Okay, so yes. And then, of course, that's, uh, that was step eight and nine, documenting and claiming, and then step 10 there, you want to pay and renew, and yes, step 11, step 11, of course, you want to now continue if you are in the third year of your renewal cycle. Ah, yes, here comes a new one. Wait, let me go to the next slide so I can bring this up. Next slide, and let me bring this one up for Sharon. Okay, I am CAPM certified. Do I earn any PDUs for today? Uh, yes, you do. This is uh, in the technical leadership area. You know, normally I say, yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, should you earn PDUs, right? Let me ask you this. Should you earn PDUs for a webinar about PDUs? E maybe. Okay. So I don't see a problem if you submit this to PDI, P PDI, to PMI. Where are we at? We are at about 41 minutes, right? So about 45 minutes uh, by the time we're ending here, maybe a little longer. So you can earn 0.75 PDUs in the technical category. This is definitely not leadership. This is definitely not strategic in business. If it's anything, then it is technical. If you are not hurting for PDUs, then I would suggest don't claim today because it's kind of iffy, right? It's sort of a borderline situation. Earning PDUs for learning about PDUs? I don't know. Okay. Oh, and by the way, this is also brand new. If some of you are CAPM certified and you're looking at this going, 
wait, I don't have to earn PDUs as a CAPM. This is literally brand new, okay? Within the last eight weeks, PMI changed the rules for CAPMs. In the past, you had to retake your certification. Now you earn PDUs, just like everybody else in a three year cycle. So thank you for this question. Sharon allowed me to also talk about this change. Okay. As a reminder, you know, the key to your overall success is to plan and to earn about one and a half PDUs every month. And if you are a podcast listener, then I would like to recommend the Project Management Podcast at pm-podcast.com slash PDU, where you can learn how to earn up to 60 PDUs totally for free. So, Sharon, again, your question there, you know, can I earn PDUs for this webinar? Yeah, you can, but, you know, it's better to go to this link here, learn about how the Project Management Podcast can give you PDUs, and just listen to the interviews. You know, you'll actually learn something about project management. I also told you at the very beginning that you don't have to write anything down because I have an article about this. So go to pm-podcast.com slash 10 steps, pm-podcast.com slash 10 steps, as in the, you know, the 10 steps to renewing, and you will get to the article where all of these 10 steps are laid out properly. Okay. Um, yes, um, my colleague Sharon just put a, a comment up for everybody. Visit the PDU podcast at pmpodcast.com. Uh, typo, this is not the PDU podcast, this is the PM podcast. Okay, uh, the big difference is the PM podcast that's just a podcast with you know interviews with general practitioners, whereas the PDU podcast, different URL, is. Uh, webinars, video webinars like this one, where you can have a subscription and you'll get PDUs as well. Uh, there we go. Um, here we go. Wait, there we go. Uh, Yorlala says, the PM Podcast is a great podcast. I listen and love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for making my day. Always good to hear that people enjoy what you are doing. All right. Um, here are all the links. Here are the four links that I told you. So it's all pm-podcast.com slash uh, PDU. Slash PDU will take you to the information about how to earn 60 PDUs. Slash CCRHB will take you to the handbook. Uh, slash log file will take you to the log file that allows you to document your learning and slash 10 steps will take you to the 10 steps article. Okay. And if by chance you are here on the live stream and you haven't had a chance to answer your question or I missed your question, apologies for that, then please don't hesitate. Go here, right? If you have any unanswered PDU questions, go to our PDU forum and this is slightly different. This is not PM Podcast. This is PM Prepcast. So this is pmprepcast.com slash ask Cornelius. And this is specific about PDUs after. I'm repeating that or I'm emphasizing this. This is for PDUs after you have passed your PMP exam. So let me quickly scan here through the questions just to see if I have missed anybody's live question uh, there we go Rista thank you for saying that uh, very good uh, I believe I have seen all the questions here uh, that were answered there we go another one from him yeah you're welcome thank you for joining us today okay wonderful everybody yes and I guess with that uh, it is time for me to say until next time. It's been an uh, absolute pleasure here doing this live webinar for you. Um, again, if you are watching this on the Project Management Podcast feed, I hope it was just enjoyable for you to watch it recorded as it was for everybody here uh, attending live. There will be more live 
uh, events coming like this. We have another one planned in a week. That's one is more about the PMP exam preparation, um, but there will be more PDU related. There will be about uh, webinars about the PMP exam, there will be webinars about project management in general, and they will all be live events that we're holding, and you will get an invitation for that. So, thank you again for attending here today, and until next time. And there you have it, a 10-step process on how to earn your PDUs with purpose over the next three years, six years, nine years, 12 years, and so on. Please visit pm-podcast.com for show notes, transcripts, and of course, PDU information. Yes, pm-podcast.com slash PDU. That's where you can find everything about how to earn PDUs with the Project Management Podcast. Our email address is info at pm-podcast.com. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, until next time. Oh, and one more thing. This was, of course, episode 455 and not 355, like I said in the intro. Don't know where my head is and I should know how to count.